Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about four puzzling menopause questions and answers. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. I get so many women emailing in, writing in about symptoms that they're experiencing during the menopause and very often they're the same question. So a lot of women are thinking the same thing. So I thought today that I would go through four common questions that I'm asked on a regular basis. So number one is, can the menopause last into my 60s? There's been large studies showing that menopause symptoms such as hot flushes, night sweats and anxiety can continue for women into their 60s, 70s and even 80s. But the problem here is that it can often be other health issues. Some of these health issues can appear towards the end of the menopause and they end up perpetuating the same symptoms right through the, the years. The health issues mainly involved would be things like low vitamin D, low vitamin B12, low iron, low thyroid function, diabetes and also heart disease. Although a very small number of women will continue with hormone fluctuations for a number of years, for the majority of women over 60 who've maybe not had periods for 10 years or more, if they are still getting these symptoms, then it's really important to check these health issues just to rule them out. What you can then do if everything is okay if none of these health issues are a problem, then you can still treat them as you would have done during the menopause. Number two, how do you tell the difference between the menopause and underactive thyroid symptoms? Problem is they are practically identical. Both the menopause and low thyroid function will give you symptoms such as fatigue, um, poor hair or your hair falling out, poor nails, joint aches and pains, poor sleep and anxiety and low mood. And very often they appear at the same time. One of the things we've noticed over the years that many women hitting the menopause, that triggers poor thyroid function. So both these issues start round about the same time and it can be very difficult to distinguish which is what. Most important thing here is if you're getting this package of symptoms is to go and ask your doctor for a, a thyroid test. It's so easily put right if, if you get this diagnosed that it, it, it's worth getting the symptoms. You know so many women end up with poor thyroid function throughout the menopause and as I mentioned in question one the, these Health issues can last for 20, 30, even 40 years after the menopause. So it's well worth getting a checkup just to rule it out. Number three is, can the menopause cause morning sickness? When I first started doing this a, a, a number of years ago, one of the surprising menopause symptoms was nausea. It seems to be you know, one of the ones that's in our top 10 menopause tips. And it's, it's puzzling in a way, although again, like pregnancy, there's a lot of hormonal fluctu fluctuations going on and this can lead to nausea. But there are other things that can trigger the nausea too. We found that low blood sugar levels can do it. So if you are going long periods without food, that can make you nauseous dehydration can cause nausea as well. So especially if you're getting nausea at the same time every day, then normally there will be some kind of trigger that you're either doing or not doing that's then leading to the nausea. We know too that falling hormones can put huge pressure on your liver and if the liver is overtaxed then it can cause nausea too. So you would be looking at herbs like maybe peppermint, dandelion, ginger is a great one for nausea too but just remember 
to eat little and often and drink plenty of water and very often that can make a huge amount of difference. And number four is how can you tell if you're through the menopause if you've had a hysterectomy? There are two separate issues here. One is if you have had a hysterectomy where your ovaries remain, then normally you will get the menopause at roughly the same time you would have done had you not had the operation. So if you have a hysterectomy like this, maybe in your late 30s or early 40s, and you're going to have a natural menopause when you're 48, then you wouldn't normally start to get menopause symptoms until roughly that age. It can be difficult to know exactly when, purely because you don't have missing periods as a guide. But say if normally if you're between 45 and 55, you've previously had a hysterectomy, your ovaries remain, and you start to get menopause symptoms in that age group, that's normally an indication that that is you approaching the menopause. If you've had a total hysterectomy where the ovaries have been removed as well, then usually you will go straight into a full menopause very, very quickly. Your ovaries help to still regulate a cycle even if you're not um, getting periods because the womb has been removed. But if your ovaries have been removed as well, then you will have a complete menopause very quickly. If you then start to get menopause symptoms well after you've had this particular type of operation, then it could be due to factors that I mentioned in question number one, where other health issues have come in and are causing similar symptoms. Hope you found this one useful. As I said at the beginning, these are really common questions that I'm asked on a regular basis. If you have any puzzling menopause questions, then please comment below and I will try and help. And until then, I will see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.